Good day everyone, happy day of the week. Today we're going to be looking at this Sony DC3200 digital camera all the way back from about 2000. Let's take a look. And here it is at the table. So again, this is the Kodak DC3200 one megapixel digital camera. I'm going to go ahead and put the specs right there that, we're gonna, that I got offline. So yeah, so this does have on it a uh, 1.6 inch LCD on the back, uh, one megapixel sensor, fixed focus, has flash on it, built-in optical viewfinder. You can transfer pictures via a serial port on the side here. However, to transfer those pictures, you did need special Kodak software that you cannot get anymore. And even if you could get it, I'm sure it does not work with any modern Windows. You probably have to have Windows 98 or Windows XP to get this working with it. Unfortunately, um, you can always use the compact flash slot on the bottom of this camera, which it does use, to get uh, pictures on and off it. So here's our compact flash card. This is a 128 meg card, which is way too big for what this would have had at the time. If you want to pop it back out, you just hit the little button, pops out. As far as the back of it goes, you can see we got our menu button, our up and down, select, flash on and off. We'll probably flash on off auto switches to go back and forth our optical viewfinder little tiny light next to it but that was a button at first but it's just a light top of it real simple it's got just a shutter button two stage you know press a little more and clicks again it's got a piece of tape here with a question mark on it don't know why um, i did buy this at a yard sale for a dollar maybe they were questioning if it worked or not the bottom Info serial number labels missing, that's okay. Uh, batteries go right here, and the DC adapter is right here. So we're gonna put some batteries in it and get it working. Again, the batteries go right here. It does look like it takes two double A's, but looks can be deceiving as it actually takes four double A's. So I'm assuming with it taking four double A's, that that adapter on the side is probably for a typical six volt power supply, which it, I don't think it did come with. Um, as far as the original price on this camera, I believe from what I found online, uh, when it came out in uh, roughly 2000, 2001, um, reviews of that time period denote it being a great value for under 250. So great value under 250 probably means it costs 249.99. So if we switch it once to camera, it's gonna turn on slowly, access the memory card, and tell us we have how many pictures? 624 for that card. Now, I don't know if it's seen the full 128 meg card as that would have been pretty big at the time for this camera. It has two megs of built-in memory, which held about 20 to 22 pictures. The picture's about 180K a piece, so if you want to do the math and figure if it's using the full 128 meg, I don't know, but 600 pictures is plenty, 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 plenty. So we can see my TRS-80 over there sitting. So we're going to go ahead and snap a picture of that. All right, we did it with the flash on and I'm going to do it with the flash off. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of it with my phone. Just to compare, there we go. All right, so we'll see how that compares to it right here. So, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a difference. <laughs> I mean, one being one megapixel and the phone being, I don't know, 17 or whatever. It, it, it's an LG G6, whatever megapixel that camera has on it. Um, now, as far as, uh, it, oh, this is your playback buttons we can see. There's our picture. And there's our other one with the flash now. The flash makes it very bright, which on reviews I found at the time was a common complaint saying that when the flash was on, the pictures were way too bright. I'm sure you could fix that in uh, editing software. Even at the time, you could probably tone down the brightness just a little bit and make it look decent. Uh, one curiosity to me was this video alt port on the side. So I'm going to try to connect this to a TV. Let me see what TV I got around. We can do that with. Hey, you're back. It's our RCA TV from last week. <laughs> now, as far as connecting this, this is the best solution I could find. So the side of this here uses 
a uh, like micro-sized uh, headphone or TRS connection, so that fits in there. I have it go into an adapter to make it into a full-size connector to connect into the TV. So I'll turn the TV on. Battery's already in this one. And let's see if we can see anything. Ah, uh, we see nothing. Okay, so that's that stinks. Um, I'm guessing just it, it doesn't line up with whatever output it's giving. Oh, all right, hold on. All right, so let me get it closer. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Okay, so if you look at the TV and look at the camera, now when the camera sees the cord connected, it, it, its screen turns off and should send the signal to this. So if we do that, kind of wiggle it. Okay. So you can see it's trying to give the video to the TV, but clearly it's not. Whatever connector on this cord that this camera uses is not the same as the connector on the TV for sending video. So by me kind of pulling out a little bit, it's crossing the connectors and it's coming through a little bit where you can kind of see what's going on. But yeah, see, not quite. And that buzzing means it's crossing into the audio. So not unfortunately gonna work, but Again, you know, not a bad picture on the LCD, go a little closer here for you now. So not a terrible picture, unfortunately, this setup is not gonna work. That's too bad. That would have been really neat. Back off just a little bit, there we go. One thing I was gonna comment that, you know, even though this form factor is, you know, kind of strange looking with, the, with the, 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 the lens all the way to one side, it's not something that was uncommon. So, I mean, here's a Mavica from, you know, uh, a couple years later, but the Mavica had the same form factor for its entire run. Again, lens all the way to one side. Now, the Mavica, obviously, it took the floppy disk. That's why it's so big. Um, this one just copied the same form factor or maybe set that form factor. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it was just common at the time or what, but anyway. So again, DC3200. I do hope you guys enjoy seeing a little more of this kind of, uh, you know, vintage vintage yet semi-modern electronics one of my favorite types so as always guys i'll see you next time